Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back with another video about color theory. This particular video is probably a little weirder because it's both art and it's science. So let's get sciencey. That's a bit more like it. So today let's talk about are black and white actually colors? Stick around. So some people might say, black and white, they're not really colors. But are they? For artists? For non-artists? The answer might surprise you. So let's talk science. In terms of how color actually works, there are two sort of types of color. Additive and subtractive color. Additive color is how light works. You have basically three primary colors of light. Red, blue, and green. And when you mix three, three colors of light together, you get white. The colors in the spectrum of light of red, blue, and green are how our eyes perceive color, how light works in terms of spectral stuff in the universe, as well as how TVs and computer screens work. If you look close enough to, on a TV, or you get a magnifying glass, what you'll see are those three indicating colors to create any variety of color you can imagine. And of course, when you mix the three colors together, you get white, and any d color that's just darker or black is just the absence of that light. However, on a science standpoint, artists use a form of color theory known as subtractive color. This is how pigments work. Pigments, unlike colors and wavelengths of light, absorb and reflect light to give us the color. And while the primaries share a similarity of red and blue with additive color, rather than green, you get yellow. And when you add all three together, rather than getting white, you get a brown or a black, essentially a dark color by mixing all of those pigments together. But with all of this weird sciencey stuff aside, we still have not answered our initial question. Are black and white colors? In terms of art, in terms of pigments, yes, black and white are colors because they're pigments. And yes, if you're a digital artist, you can actually play with additive color in a program like Photoshop, and it's interesting and kind of weird to, to do that. It's a bit of a disconnect. But the way that pigments behave, in treating black and white like colors, that's how art works. That's how everything works in the real world. If you're as long as you're not talking about the colors of light. Now, of course, a science buff will probably try and argue otherwise. I highly anticipate several of them in comments. But despite all of the science you guys out there, think about this as the simple example. This paper towel is white. It was probably dyed or bleached white to, to give it this color. This particular paper towel, if we were standing in the dark, you couldn't see that it was white, but that doesn't mean it's not white anymore. It's still white, whether or not you can see it. So to review, black and white are, yes, they're tonal values in terms of light, but in terms of the art world, in terms of color theory for an artist, you have to treat them as colors. If you don't, you're probably going to be messing yourself up. So the color theory behind subtractive color is really what every artist is taught from whether they're day one as a hobbyist or something even that I think most people learn when they're a little kid. You get a little pan of watercolors or crayons, you mix yellow and blue and you're going to get green, you mix red and blue and you're going to get purple, you mix red and yellow and you're going to get orange, and if you mix all of them together you're going to get something that resembles black. The one instance I do think is worth noting for a fine artist is if you're more or less going to be painting with light. Uh, there is something with doing large-scale outdoor projects, things like large installation work, where perhaps you're not going to be painting an image on a wall, but displaying an Im image on a wall, or multiple images on a wall, with light. When you do that, you have to understand the properties of light, because when you start trying to mix colors based on pi the pigment subtractive way, and you're just showing like maybe a blue and a green on a building like this, that's going to change the color, because light works differently. So, I hope you enjoyed your science lesson for today and how it relates back to art and for color theory. Part of this video was inspired by me watching a recent episode of SciShow. It was about uh, illustrators and artists that made a difference in the scientific community. And the guy that kind of pushed forward this idea of additive and subtractive color was featured in that. So do check that video out as well. And uh, always be sure to subscribe to this channel, support on Patreon if you're able to. And this has been from Cinderblock Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. I really flubbed that ending. That's ridiculous. And what really any kid is taught when they're younger. The primary colors, when you mix them together, you get a dark. Red and blue make green. 
No, they don't. <laughs> wow. I don't even know what I was saying now. <laughs>